Hello, welcome to the Friday, December 8th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remember about two weeks ago, Intel released a set of patches for its management engine, infamous Intel ME, and also Active Management Technology, or AMT, to patch a couple of flaws. Well, we now got more details about uh, this flaw at Black Hat Europe. Positive Technologies, who worked with Intel on these flaws and who originally discovered it, did a demonstration of how to exploit these vulnerabilities. Due to this particular code running outside of anything the operating system controls, any kind of security software that you are running on your system, like antivirus and the like, is of course pretty much useless. On the other hand, uh, this subsystem is actually powered on as soon as you connect the computer to a power. You don't actually have to really start up the system. So uh, this allows you to attack uh, this subsystem on a computer that's turned off. On the other hand, you do need physical access to the system unless you can gain access via any of the remote control software like IPMI. But in this case, you would need to get past authentication. Of course, there have been in the past a couple of authentication bypass vulnerabilities in various IPMI or vPro implementations. But at the very least, this opens up the possibility of a pretty nasty evil mate attack. Usually that's a vulnerability that where you refer to leaving a laptop unsupervised in a hotel room and then a mate or someone with access to the hotel room would be able to exploit it. In this case, they would have full access to the management engine. They could uh, introduce additional code or they could just swap out the firmware on it. Now, the particular exploit that was demoed here at Black Hat Europe took advantage of a stack-based buffer overflow. Stack-based buffer overflows tend to be the easier kind to exploit, but Intel went actually so far to implement stack canaries, which make exploitation of stack-based buffer overflows more difficult. However, standard technique of bypassing stack canaries, return-oriented programming was actually successful here and in the demonstration it was shown how this uh, particular vulnerability can be exploited reliably. Patches delivered by Intel so far have been somewhat incomplete according to the presentation. Probably your best bet is if you don't use the management engine, turn it off in particular on these mobile systems. Now, initially, the idea was that it wouldn't be possible to turn off uh, Intel ME. However, due to an undocumented function within uh, this chipset, it is possible. And there are now a number of tools available that allow you to do this. And I already talked, I think it was this week, about some laptop vendors who offer systems with this management engine disabled by default. And researchers at Princeton University developed an interesting technique to track the location of users of mobile devices, even if GPS is turned off. What this really relies on is all the different other sensors that you have available in a modern mobile device, like for example, air pressure sensors, accelerometers and the like. And what they're doing here is that they're loading a model of all possible paths that you could take in a certain area. And then they're trying to match accelerometer readings barometer readings and the like to that particular map to narrow down which particular roads, for example, you are on. Sounds uh, pretty tricky. Not sure how reliable all of this is in sort of a real environment. 
But remember, many of the settings are even available via JavaScript without asking the user for permission, like accelerometers and the like. So this may be actually one way how this technique can be exploited instead of actually making the user install an application. And in another talk at Black Hat Europe, Tal Lieberman and Eugene Kogan from Ensilo demonstrated an interesting technique to bypass anti-malware with fileless malware. Now, modern anti-malware does inspect memory, but typically only if there is a new process being initiated. And of course, it does scan files on disk. To bypass this inspection process, uh, these researchers came up with something that they call process doppelgangers. Now, it takes advantage of NTFS, uh, the modern Windows file system, which supports transactions. So essentially, so what they're doing here is that after the file was inspected and then when it's loaded into a memory, they're starting an NTFS transaction where they are modifying the file on disk. After that particular segment has been loaded in memory, they're rolling that transaction back and essentially restoring the original state of the file. So with this, they really only change the file on the disk while it's being read. Then of course, antivirus will have a real hard time to catch that. There have been other techniques uh, that sort of modified files in memory. There are usually some very specific API calls that have to be called if you do that. And antivirus has learned over the years to actually intercept uh, those API calls. But uh, this particular technique has so far not been included in any anti-malware. And well, that's it for today. Remember at 10 a.m. on Friday today, I will do a webcast about some of the recent OASP top 10 changes. Sorry, I forgot to add the links to these webcasts yesterday. This one is actually easy to remember. It's sans.org slash webcasts, but hopefully I'll remember to add the full link to the show note. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.